Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's YouTube video, I thought we would talk about pulmonary edema seen on a chest x-ray and all the differentials um, that have to be on your mind when you do see this on a chest x-ray. So um, when there's pulmonary edema on chest x-ray, uh, it's usually from a disruption of Starling's forces. Now I won't get into that, but basically there's too much pressure in the pulmonary arteries causing a disruption of osmotic pressures pushing fluid and um, other proteins out into the alveolar space causing high hypoxemia and shortness of breath. Now there are two causes of pulmonary edema and there's cardiogenic and there's non-cardiogenic. Usually cardiogenic comes from hypertensive emergency, acute coronary syndrome, um, and very often from a heart failure exacerbation. So the heart isn't pumping well enough. It has backup of fluid back into the lungs, increasing that pressure um, and causing fluid to go into the alveolar spaces. And that's the cardiogenic pathophysiology. Um, the non-cardiogenic pathophysiology, there's many different causes um, and I won't get into those because there's many different uh, things that can cause non-cardiogenic and the patho behind them is all different. But basically, if there is a pulmonary artery catheterization that's done and the pulmonary artery wedge pressure is less than 18, then you are going to consider a non-cardiogenic cause. Um, there's many different kinds of things that can cause non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Um, the most dangerous one is probably ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, um, which can be caused from sepsis, um, this is just a lot of fluid going into the lungs very quickly. Um, it can be caused from sepsis, it can be caused from uh, pneumonia, it can be caused from trauma, inhaled toxins, um, smoking crack cocaine, e-cigarette use, many different things. Um, uh, and then there's other types of non-cardiogenic causes of pulmonary edema like um, end-stage renal disease, so just too much fluid in the body and it goes into the lungs. Um, pulmonary embolisms can cause this many, many, many different things, high altitude syndrome. And when you have all this fluid in the lungs, most of the symptoms um, that the patient will have are just shortness of breath. So they'll come in and say, I can't catch my breath. Um, they may have orthopnea if it's congestive heart failure. Um, if it's very bad, you may see some hypoxemia. Um, on physical exam, you may hear some crackles on exam. Um, or if there's so much fluid in the lungs, there's a pleural fusion. You may hear some consolidation on the bottom um, of the lung fields. Um, and the quickest way to diagnose shortness of breath uh, in the emergency room is getting that portable chest x-ray. So telling the radiology tech to come quickly, get a, just a one view, just looking at what's going on in the lungs. So seen here is a chest x-ray of a 65 year old male presenting with the chief complaints of shortness of breath and orthopnea. The chest x-ray demonstrates mild pulmonary vascular congestion, a little bit of enlarged hyalur shadow seen at the arrowheads, and all this is indicative of left ventricular decompensation seen in acute heart failure exacerbation. Now, this is a chest x-ray of a patient that has acquired high altitude pulmonary edema. It reveals characteristic patchy alveolar infiltrates, um, a little more predominant in the right in this picture that versus the left, but it becomes more bilateral as the illness progresses. And uh, going from there, you can go into other extensive diagnostic workups if you think it's a pulmonary embolism. You can get a CT angio because it won't show um, things on chest x-ray for the most part. Um, bad pulmonary embolisms can show a little bit of edema on x-ray um, after uh, distal to the embolism, uh, but you can get a, a CT angio. Um, and then obviously get a two view if you think it's something more infectious causing the symptoms. And just keep in mind, um, if the dyspnea started quickly, um, have a higher things in your differential like ARDS, sometimes I can start one to two hours after the inciting event. And obviously if you think something cardiac is going on, add an EKG, troponin, um, a BNP, uh, basic natriuretic peptide, uh, that shows how much stretch is happening in the heart. Uh, it becomes elevated in heart failure, which is one of the most common causes of uh, this disease. And then if the patient has a high creatinine, have end-stage renal disease on your differential, um, 
it's really a lot of clinical decision making, um, deciding whether it's cardiac or non-cardiac from going from the diagnostic workup in that regard. And then when it comes to the treatment of this disease, um, obviously you want to going to want to do some temporizing measures. So if they're hypoxic, add um, oxygen, non-repeavers, or even a BiPAP if they need that. If acute coronary syndrome is happening, then do your temporizing measures, but then they just need to go see the cath lab. Um, if it's heart failure causing this, obviously temporizing measures first, but then uh, they're going to need an IV established or just give them Lasix right off the bat. If it's in-stage renal disease, then uh, pulmonary edema on chest x-ray um, is a sign for emergent dialysis, so you need to call your nephrologist of your hospital. Um, if it's ARDS, then usually these patients decompensate very quickly, so you need to intubate them quickly and get them on mechanical ventilation from there. If it's a pulmonary embolism, obviously some blood thinners. So it really just depends on what is causing the pulmonary edema. So you're going to have a high clinical suspicion one way or the other, whether they're presenting um, after travel um, and they had this leg pain for a while, now they're presenting with shortness of breath, or they're having chest pain that's exertional. Um, so you pretty much know the symptoms of all of those. So clinical decision making, treatment thereafter, and the chest x-ray will give you a good, good idea of what's going on as well. And that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a quick review of all the causes of pulmonary edema and how it happens. If you want a quick review of the difference between STEMIs and NSTEMIs, check out last week's video. But in the meantime, see you next week.